All right, so 15, a research organization reported that 41% of adults who were asked to describe their day responded, responded that they were having a good day rather, rather than a typical or bad day. To investigate whether the percent would be different for high school students, 600 high school students were randomly selected. When asked to describe their day, 245 students reported that they were having a good day rather than a typical day or a bad day. The data provide convincing statistical evidence that the proportion of all high school students who would respond that they were having a good day is different from 0.41. Okay, so um, we you can you can actually do a a test uh, a significance test for um, difference in proportions, and you can actually run this in your calculator. I'm going to show you a cool ability that your calculator has because we have enough information so we go to stat or no we don't go to stat we go to um yeah we go to stat i believe yeah you go to stat and you go to test and we are going to do a one prop z test so i already did this so you can see here um so we want to see if the if there, if the, if the proportion of students um, that you know said they were having a good day is significantly different to that of adults, which so the null hypothesis or our null proportion value p naught would be 0 0.41, and we have data, so our successes or the students that said they were having a good day is 245, our sample size is 600, and we want to see if it's different. So we're going to pick a proportion not equal to it, not equal to, because we're not looking for less than or greater than. And we just calculate this. And bang, we get our Z, your critical value, we get our P value, and our sample statistic. And you can see our sample statistic is pretty close. It's almost, it's like 0.01. It's like very, it's like not even a fraction. It's a fraction of a percent away. So the P value is 0.933. So this is not even close. This is like, this is not a, this is not going to be, be close to, you know, having any strong evidence. So um, we would say no, because the p-value is greater than any reasonable significance level. Our significance levels are alpha, but usually, you know, you go with 0.5, or but you usually go with 5%, um, sometimes 1%, sometimes as high as 10%, but nowhere near 90%. All right, 16. The director of a community recreation center conducted a six-week study to examine the effects of four types of exercise strength, four types of exercise, strength training, flexibility training, aerobics, and jogging on maximal oxygen consumption. From the 40 members who participated, the director randomly assigned 10 members to each exercise type. Um, maximal Maximal oxygen consumption was measured for each member at the beginning of the study and again at the end of the six weeks. The director examined the change in maximal oxygen consumption for each member. Which of the following statements is a correct description of a feature of the study? Okay, so this is um, this is an experiment. They're testing. They have four treatments. They're testing. One, two, three, four, and they want to see its effects on maximal oxygen consumption. So this is a response variable. So let's, um, so let's see which of these would be correct. The study has replication because there's, there are four types of exercise. No, the replication occurs when you get in big enough samples um, that were randomly selected. So it's not gonna be that. So it won't be B either, because again, it has to be, it has to do with the way you select samples and that they're large enough. The see the response variable is the type of exercise is the greatest. No, the response variable is the the ox the, the maximal oxygen cons consumption. The treatments are a type of exercise. So D would actually be the correct answer because it says treatments are the are the strength training, flexibility training, aerobics, and jogging. So it would be D, and not E because the experimental units are the are the individuals are the end of the subjects. All right, 17, Sean and Evan are college roommates who have part-time jobs as servers in restaurants. The distribution of Sean's 
weekly income is approximately normal with mean $225 and standard deviation $25. The distribution of Evan's weekly income is approximately normal with mean $240 and standard deviation $15. Assuming their weekly incomes are independent of each other, which of the following is closest to the probability that Sean will have a greater income than Evan in a randomly selected week? All right, so let me get some water. All right, so this is gonna be um, a calculation with um, random variables. So let's first draw a um, sketch of each distribution. So we have two normal distributions. We have Sean's approximately normal, to mean 225, standard deviation 25. We have Evans, oh, I must ignore that. Approximately normal as well with mean 240 and standard deviation 15. And we wanna find the probability that S will say Sean's income will be greater than Evans. So the S is greater than E. So we need to make another distribution that's generated by the differences in their distribution. So we're gonna have another variable D that's gonna be equal to Sean's income minus Evan's income. And so then what we need to actually find is the probability that D is greater than zero because for Sean to be more than Evans, that means that would be the same as, you know, this difference being greater than zero being positive. So we wanna find, our goal is to find the probability that D is greater than zero with this distribution. So we're gonna have a new distribution where the mean of the difference will be equal to 225 minus 240 or negative 15, because again, the mean of S let me just write out the mean of S minus the mean of E. And the standard deviation will be equal to the square root of the variance. So we have to find the variance first, which is essentially the standard deviations of each distribution squared. So it'll be the square root of 25 squared plus 15 squared. So standard deviation of D will be equal to square root of 25 squared plus 15 squared. So it'll be about 29.15. Okay, so now we have a, our third distribution is the one we're gonna actually use calculations. This, ha, this is approximately normal with a mean of negative 15 and a standard deviation of 29.15. So this is centered at negative 15. And you wanna find the probability that D is greater than zero which is meaning that we're gonna, zero is gonna be over here. So we wanna find essentially this, this area here. So we wanna find the area to the right of zero in this distribution. So for that, we can use our calculator. We go to our distribution function, normal CDF. The lower bound is zero. So zero comma upper bound, it's like a, a very large number because we're just going from zero to infinity. Comma, the mean is negative 15, the standard deviation of 29.15. And that gives us a probability of about 0. 0.3034. That's the area over there. And so the answer will be D.
this is usually one of the toughest problems because I'm, this is from the probability section. So um, really practice with this because probability is always the lowest scoring. I think every single year, the probability section has been the lowest scoring portion of the AP exam. So don't stress out too much if you find it difficult because it's pretty normal. All right, so 18, according to the data from the United States Elections Project, only 36% of, of eligible voters voted in the 2014 elections. A random sample of size 40, which of the following best describes the sampling distribution of PHAT? The sample proportion of people who voted in 2014 elections. Okay, so the sampling distribution of PHAT. So, the mean of p hat will be equal to the population, the population proportion, which will be 0.36. And the standard deviation of p hat, again, we can use our formula sheet. And we look at sampling distribution for proportions. So it'll be equal to the square root of p hat times one minus p hat over n. So this will be 0.36, one minus 0 0.36, 0 0.64. Sample size is 40 over the square root of all that square root under 40. So using our calculator again, 0.36 times 0.64 divided by 40, the 0.5 power, a standard deviation of 0 0.07589. So let's see which one matches up. So the standard deviations, approximately normal, mean 0.36, standard deviation of 0 0.076. So the answer would be C. All right.